Welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. The latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Here's co-host Bob Bennis. Good morning, fellow Catholics, and welcome to Living Our Faith. We appreciate you setting this time aside to join us each week. In a few moments, we're going to meet our guest. It's a very Irish day here on Living Our Faith. But first, let's welcome the host of our show, His Excellency Archbishop Jerome Listecki. And Your Excellency, I would like to start off by wishing you a happy birthday, because tomorrow is, is another milestone for you. Thank you for making me a year older, Bob, <laughs> and reminding me of my age. And, you know, I'm trying to creep out of my chair now, type of thing. But I, I didn't you. say you were old. You look good for your age. Oh, there, well, that's there a, you go. Yeah, and you say that on radio. That's really good, too. That really, <laughs> thanks, Bob, so much. Thank you. We've got another, an, another event coming up that is completely different, which is next Thursday, and that's St. Patrick's Day. And we've got a very exciting guest today. Why don't you go ahead and do the honors? Yeah, sure. If you, would. you know, um, um, it, that's the day when everybody puts an O in front of their name. So we're all Irish. Lestecki becomes old Lestecki. Old Lestecki, <laughs> old Benis. Old Benis. We all become. We all become <laughs> Irish. And we're happy to have with us Chuck McLaughlin. Chuck, uh, it's going to help us to go through a little bit of the a little history of the Irish Catholics in Milwaukee. A little bit of the history, the tradition. We're just going to have a nice, friendly, okay. friendly talk with a uh, with a friend. Welcome, Chuck. Thank to, you. Uh, Thank uh, you. To our, our radio program, and, and and Chuck, we always ask everyone who is a um, uh, a newbie onto the the program. Tell, tell us a little bit about your faith life. Well, you guys, obviously, you know you're Irish, so yeah. I mean, you got to have Catholicism. Well, I know I'm Catholic, too. <laughs> right. Catholicism <laughs> running through your blood. Yes. So, yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your your, uh, your faith life, okay? Well, uh, I was brought up Catholic, baptized, and, and have my sacraments out of from St. Patrick's Church on the south side. And um, it, it, St. Patrick's has always been a big part of my life, uh, uh, even as I, I grew older and... Um, uh, got married, had my own family, and and uh, a reflection always came back to St. Patrick's, even though we were in different parishes. Sure, sure. But uh, uh, it was um, uh, mass has always been a big thing for me. Sure, uh, it helped me get through some very rough times the last couple of years, losing my wife and uh, and also losing my son two years uh, before. So I, know, I I just don't know, Chuck, what people do without faith. You know when they encounter losses like that. I don't know how you can get through it. I don't. I, I don't. I, I. I think it's such a great gift from God that we yeah. do have that faith because we we do know the the, the feeling of the loss is so yes. deep and oh, so hard. It just without it, I I don't think anybody can really get through it. But but faith makes you. You basically it reaches out to you and say, "This is not the end. Right. This is not the end." Yeah. You know. Yep. God's got God's got us wait. God's waiting there, you know, to kind of mm-hmm. either join us together or to to bring sure. us bring sure. us to a, a, a larger understanding of of the meaning of the love that we experience. Sure. But it, it but it's not never gone. It's yeah. never gone. No, it's never gone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It 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 really does help you get through. If if you wouldn't have faith uh, in my own personal uh, life, uh, I don't know how I would have got through it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally, totally agree with you. But so you're basically Irish community all your life too, huh? Uh, basic, yes, yeah. mostly. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, uh, of course, we, we were known as the Southside Irish. Um, the beginning of the um, Irish coming to Milwaukee uh, was was probably set around uh, 1849 or so. Uh-huh. And uh, where they settled was, and a lot of people really don't know that, was in the word. Third Ward. In the Third Ward. Mm-hmm. Third Ward, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they built their community up in that area, building homes and, you know, getting... There's a lot of work in that area, you know, the steamships coming in and the railroads and... Factories. Um, but uh, 18, about 1898 or so, uh-huh. they had a huge fire wow. and, and drove all the Irish west. And then they settled in areas like Merrill Park which is between 27th Street and um, uh, 35th Street on Michigan Avenue. And the church there, there was two churches there, Catholic, was Jesu, uh-huh. and also was uh, Rose of Lima um, on 30th in Michigan. Uh, that's where I got introduced into the bigger part of the Irish uh, when I joined the Shamrock Club. What What's a Shamrock Club? You know, you the Shamrock, Shamrock Club, Club is a, a family uh, of... Uh, Either Irish-born 
or, or parents born in Ireland or um, uh, just uh, people that are interested in their in their history of, of their uh, nationalities. Uh-huh. And the Shamrock Club brings out a lot if, if uh, the people, uh, you know, uh, don't know much about their heritage. Well, this is a place to come because, you know, we have it all, uh-huh. you know, about the different families and that came to Milwaukee in the earlier years. And there's a lot of those families, their children's children's children belong to the Shamrock Club. Oh, wow. Well, wow, great. And what year did that begin? I read, but it, it, early it 60s? March 1960 was charged. 1960. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you joined in what 79. year? 79. 79. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was pretty well going when I got there. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, you wouldn't be tipping a few when you'd get together <laughs> like that, would you? Anybody listening? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, a wee bit, you might say. A wee bit. A wee bit of the creature. A wee bit. Yeah, a wee bit. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so you get together and you you learn about it. It, it, yeah. it, it can instills in you a little bit about the the, the heritage. Sure. And what sure. what what things would you highlight? You know, if you came back as Shamrock, who who would be speaking and what what things would you be highlighting? Some well, stories of a uh, of stories the of Irish families. Uh, you know, if people wanted to know, and uh, we have a genealogy section, which has been going for about twenty years now, and it really has a lot of people involved in it. Uh-huh. You know, because if, say, like me now, I know about my history of my family when they came here and that, but there are a lot of younger people that don't know that. And then suddenly they get to be adults and they say, I wonder what my great-grandfather came mm-hmm. from. That type of thing. Well, that's why we're here, just for that purpose. Is there, is there a predominant county from Ireland that that settled here in Milwaukee? Uh, I would say mixed. Uh, mo- well, mainly more from the south than, than the south of Ireland. The, more the south uh, like Dublin and uh, uh, Cork and um, that's from my family from Cork and and, uh, and Donegal. And Donegal. Yeah. Uh, that's where my people are from. But uh, they they come from all parts of Ireland. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. So. And then when uh, when you get together and uh, basically to, um, um, to celebrate, what, what, what do you focus on? Uh, I do you focus on uh, your national heritage, or are you to focus on your uh, the 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 Irish faith? Well, there's both. There's room for both. Uh, you know, it depends on the individual, of course. Uh, it seems like the faith comes with the package. It's already there. Sure, sure. And the other part of it is, like I say, learning about your family and uh, how Irish they were, and uh, you know, the, where your grandfather came from and grandmother and um, uh, so that's that's what we do, and then we bring in some of the things that a lot of people don't know about Ireland, some of the traditions in Ireland. Uh, that, what are some of those traditions in Ireland? Well, some some people would say drinking, but I deny that. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, uh, well, dance for one thing. Uh huh. Sure. Now we have seven schools in the Milwaukee area. Up from the 70s, I think there was just two. And one of them was from out of Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we we bring in, uh, if you'd like to learn um, the Irish language. Now, when you say dance, you, you particularly yeah. mean the step dancing, yeah, right? Yeah, well, step dancing or group dancing. And group dancing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then, of course, you have your, your Friday night Kayleys, which is like uh, groups getting together to dance. Uh-huh. That's That's the other part of dancing. So you have your 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 uh, competition dancing with with other schools, and and the competition is generally held in Ireland. Yeah, yeah. So any one of the instructors that wants to get to be a, an Irish dancer with the credentials, a lot of them had to go to Ireland to learn it. Oh yeah, that's oh, mm-hmm. absolutely because we didn't have it here, right? And, but they still do. They, they still, still get do. rated. They yeah. still yeah. So if you want to be an instructor, you're, yeah. you you literally have to go through yeah. a rating system, right? And uh, even those we we see these uh, young people who do the Irish step dancing, mm-hmm. oftentimes performing at St. Patrick's Day sure. functions, sure. Around the we don't realize that uh, a number of them will be. Na- nationally internationally accredited they will be they'll wow. actually yes. receive wow they'll actually mm-hmm. receive kind of a level that you know they would yes. be in, in major competitions they would say they're a level of four or level of three you know and they sure and they will actually also uh, to, for that to go into instruction and then then to go into to instruction, be accredited to be accredited yeah. exactly yeah. exactly so but, uh, so there's there's <coughs> there's so much you know that people learn from from our group yeah 
Yeah, and so, and what what are some of the, what would be some of the traditions in the home for uh, an, an Irish family? You know, what were some of the things that um, um, that you'd highlight as a family in a home? Well, uh, of course, St. Patrick's Day is one of them. Sure, but a lot of people don't know this: corned beef and cabbage didn't come from Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> that is a shocker for yeah, a lot. Of it is yeah, for it is. a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my dad, when he came here, he didn't even. Uh, know what corned beef and cabbage was <laughs> but anyway those are but we uh uh we we try to teach uh and uh preserve the irish family irish culture uh the irish dancing uh people got any questions uh, we have uh people that can teach you how to speak irish um uh and and, and bring on some of the traditions each family has the same tradition but they have different traditions for their family how to make Irish stew. Is that one of them? <laughs> yeah, Dinty Moore. <laughs> did, did, yeah, you open, get that can and you open it up, Bob, and you kind of pour it into a pot. Yeah. You know, and you've got... You, you've got that, that saved me a couple of times. <laughs> now, you mentioned the seven clubs, the Irish dancer clubs that are here. And is is that a contributing factor to the to Irish Fest being as big as it is on a yearly basis? Because I did, what I read in preparation is that Irish Fest here in Milwaukee is the largest Irish festival of its kind. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. So tell, uh, us, t- t- tell us what all, in addition to the dancers, what all contributes to, to those elements. Oh, gosh. You got uh, Irish poultry. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got, they bring culture from, the, from Ireland. Mm-hmm. They bring people into Ireland to teach those, those cultures. And, uh, of course, we mentioned uh, the dancing, and then we have pipe competition, pipe bands. Uh, and it, when you say pipe bands, you mean bagpipes. Bagpipe bands, bag yes. Pipes. Yeah, right. yeah. And delicious food. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I usually had the potato with everything in it, don't <laughs> I? <laughs> and then, of course, Sunday Mass. Sunday Mass is mm-hmm. very important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, we generally have, I think, I'd say, Twenty thousand people would not be an wow. uh, underestimate. I'd say you're pr- pr- probably you're probably right. Maybe yeah. may, might not always be uh, uh, twenty, but definitely between fifteen to yeah. twenty thousand. At and least, I, having done all of the fests, yeah. including Irish Fest, yeah. I, yeah. I can testify to the fact that the yeah. Irish Fest, the Catholic Irish Fest, is the the largest it's attendance. One of the largest, per mass. Yeah. yeah, the largest, the of largest. All the, well, the ones on the on the lakefront. Yes. We're having an Irish Catholic conversation here as we look, for, look ahead to St. Patrick's Day next week. We're going to take a break for some messages, and then we're going to hear the news from our good friends over at the Catholic Herald. We're talking with uh, Chuck McLaughlin. That conversation will continue. You're listening to Relevant Radio, Living Our Faith, right here in southeast Wisconsin. My name is John Pentler, and I want to tell you the Uptown story. Seventy years ago in 1946, my grandpa, Irv Pentler, sold his Mercury convertible to buy three cars to start Uptown. His vision was to offer the nicest cars and treat people fairly. When you live by that vision and make sure that every person that works at Uptown focuses on treating our guests like family, you thrive over the long haul. When you need a new car, you owe it to yourself to give Uptown a try. Uptown Ford, one block south of Mayfair Mall. As a Catholic, why buy or lease your car anywhere else? Uptown Ford donates $200 to your church or school. The people at Uptown are attentive, fair, and easy to work with. Stop in and see the people at Uptown and you'll know. Uptown Ford on Highway 100 just south of North Avenue or Uptown Motors and Slinger. Go to RelevantRadio.com, keyword Uptown. Catholic owned and Catholic proud. I'm going Uptown tonight, tonight. Good morning. I'm Grace David with headlines from this week's Catholic Herald and CatholicHerald.org. If you know a young couple that is planning to marry, please be sure they read Marriage is an Opportunity to Grow in Holiness in this week's Catholic Herald and at CatholicHerald.org. They will get sound advice from Beth and Ryan Grasinski, married for eight years and parents of three children. Among other things, Ryan encourages young couples to pray together and to know, said Beth, that that's really awkward and hard. Ryan said, when you fail, just try again. Set aside a space weekly or bi-weekly where it's just like, yep, this is our awkward moment now. We're going to do this. Prayer together has allowed just an intimacy in our communication that wouldn't exist otherwise, said Beth. Had we not gotten to that point in our journey where we were ending our nights in vocal prayer, there were so many things that I would never know that Ryan was struggling with or asking the Lord to help him with. 
It's all part of what Ryan describes as a crucible of prayer and failure, which really encapsulates their view of marriage itself. We all need joy on a daily basis, but we need to realize the true source of joy is the transcending promise of Christ, and that true joy is itself destined to be eternal. It is almost provocative to contemplate the joyous celebration that might have occurred after the disciples in the upper room overcame their shock and fear at Jesus' first appearance. But was not that encounter the cause of a necessary transition from sadness, anxiety, and fear? Is not the coming promise of Easter cause enough for us to plan just how we will be joy-filled heralds of hope? Read Father Paul's entire Herald of Hope column in this week's Catholic Herald and at catholicherald.org. Finally, if you're Catholic, you have plenty of company. According to figures released by the Vatican this week, there are 1.27 billion Catholics in the world, or 17.8% of the world's population. Until next week, this is Grace David. Thank you for listening. We now return you to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Lestecki. Welcome back to Living Our Faith. Our guest today is Chuck McLaughlin. And before the break, we were talking about Mass and, and uh, the uh, the Festival Mass. But we also want to talk about the, the annual St. Patrick's Day Mass. You are a parishioner at Immaculate Heart of Mary, but this will be your 31st year coordinating the St. Patrick's Day Mass over at St. Patrick's. That's right. 30, 31 years. Wow. Tell us about that. Well, the story behind it is a good friend of mine uh, came from Dublin, and he was a person that if his work schedule did not uh, per, uh, permit him to go to Mass, he had to go, uh, go to Mass at least once a week. Uh, he'd go every day if his work schedule let him mm-hmm. do that. And one day the two of us were just sitting around and talking, and uh, of course he knew being born in Ireland, he knew that St. Patrick's Day was a holy day in Ireland. Um, so he, we got to talking, and he said, uh, you know, he says, and I said, Joe, you're talking the same thing as me. You're thinking the same thing as me. Why don't we have a mass? And uh, he said, well, where would we have it? I said, well, there's only one place we could have it. <laughs> and I said, that would be St. Patrick's Church on the south side. Well, Joe, uh, not too familiar uh, from, for the, from the south side, didn't know much about it. I said, well, we'll drive down there one day and we'll go to mass. And you can, oh, you just love the church, you know, and I'll, I'll like the drawings and paintings and such and the windows. And uh, so I had to call the priest at the time and um, uh, ask him about our, I told him about our plan. And he said, well, he said, um, the only thing is, he said, uh, now this is pretty much of a Spanish church now. I said, I understand that. But I said, my my buddy and I, we just want to bring Irish back for at least one day a year. And uh, he said, well, I'll go to the board. So he went to the their board came back, called me up back and said, Hey, it's a goal. So that was 31 years ago. And, um, uh, we were just well accepted. Um, we had, we had, uh, uh, things going with, with Spanish people. We, we, um, uh, we started, to, uh, we asked them to do the breakfast for us. That was very successful. It was a nice fundraiser. And besides the, what's, whatever comes into church is theirs. Uh, we take, uh, no, no, uh, we pay for everything outside of uh, what has to be done, like flowers and uh, uh, anything that has to be paid for. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, they are, they're given the uh, receipts from the, from the collection and best part we could ever do. Um, Who attends the, the, mm-hmm. the mass? Uh, we have a mixed group, old, young, um, I would say on an average Sunday, if the weather is good, we'll have four to 500 people in Mass. Oh, yeah, I, but by by who attends? I mean, you've got the local or, um, aldermen, you've got, uh, oh, you've sure. got um, uh, police uh, police officials. This becomes a, uh, literally a celebration of the Irish heritage in the city. It does, I yes, do. yes. Um, there are a lot of dignitaries, uh, uh, aldermen. The Irish aldermen come in, and uh, one is, is, of course, Bob Donovan and uh, mm-hmm. his family. And uh, uh, prob- I, I think I've seen, seen the police chief, but there's so many people you, you can't uh, sure. you know, just pick out one or two. Um, sure. But, yeah, we have quite a variety. 
Sure. And you, you, you have a little bit of the pipes and drums? Yes, we have our pipe band opens up the mass. Uh, they start the procession for us. And then we have all the uh, Irish groups. Uh, when I say like the ancient order of Hibernians, uh, they're the auxiliary. We have the police and fire, uh, Irish uh, police and fire band um, members there. Uh, at, uh, and then we um, have uh, the um, our Irish Rose and Irishmen who are selected from the Shamra Club and their families. Um, and uh, the parade marshal's there with his family. So it's it's quite a celebration. And it all takes place next week on, on St. Patrick's Day. You started several months ago in preparation for this. Oh yes. Tell us about and tell us about that and what goes into the preparation on, a, well, on an annual basis. What the first thing I do is I I, I call call the church mm-hmm. and set up the date, which this year is March twelfth, and uh, that that starts that part of it off where the church is reserved. Then uh, uh, then I call the different agencies that are you know uh, like Catholic Knights. That's it. Catholic Knights went out of my thought for a moment. There will be part of our mass uh, mm-hmm. with their plume and such. And um, now the Knights of Columbus is that Knights of Columbus? Yeah, Knights of Columbus. Yeah, they're 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 there to start off the parade along right after the pipe bands. And uh, then we have the dignitaries come in, and uh, which I say is the uh, honorees. And um, then we we um, uh, fill it up with just uh, everyday people, you know that that enjoy the, being at the mass. And uh, the, the extension of that then is the celebration of uh, Irish heritage in um, um, in the entire Milwaukee area. So right. uh, in the summer you have that wonderful Irish fest. Yes, right there. Yes, but you've attended other Irish uh, uh, parades all throughout the, oh, sure. the country. Sure. Like you said, New York has a phenomenal New York, parade. yes, yes. Tell us a little bit about the New York. Well, New York is probably the most, uh, and I've been in about 10 of them, Ireland included, uh, which is a, which is an awfully long parade. Uh, New York is just, uh, it, it's, it's something different. I've never seen so many Irish organizations uh, that part- participate and uh, it's um, uh, just a huge, huge undertaking. Uh, I, I would believe that on the streets, there's probably five, ten deep from the curb. It's so so monstrous. Hmm. Yes, and 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 the other ones. And how does that compare to? You said Dublin. How does Dublin, that compare to Dublin? I'd say Dublin is probably the biggest. Uh, uh, there, there must have been millions of people uh, wow. on, on the street as we were going through Dublin. Uh, which is quite a thrill for Americans to be marching in, you know, in in, in Ireland mm-hmm. on uh, on St. Patrick's Day. So that that thrill is never gone. <laughs> what, what what would make Dublin unique as opposed to say New York or Milwaukee? What would it, what would be what would make uh, Dublin unique? Because it's in Ireland. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got that one. <laughs> but what what, did, what would they do there? Would they would they pretty much do the same thing that you do? Uh, would we would do in Milwaukee and uh, New York have various bands, sure, uh, uh, pipes and drums. You know, yep. uh, uh, would they have a would they have a queen of, of St. Patrick's Queen? Well, generally, it would probably be an Irish rose. An Irish rose. Oh. Yeah, like we have Irish rose, Irish Men of the Year, and then parade marshal. Uh one of the the year we were there, in fact, one of the dictaries was uh, Margaret O'Brien. Oh, sure. The the actress from many years back. She was the, in the, the child star. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Of course, she was in the child end, but uh, it was 1988. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, all in all, it was it was you know phenomenal for for American um, to be going to see something like that. You know, that that amount of people and the cheering and uh, for for us people from from America. Yeah. So it was it was quite quite unique. I never forgot it. And you, you have you been to Ireland multiple times, or was that your one and only visit? Oh no, I've been there mul- multiple. You times. have okay, yeah, yeah. And made sure family has all gotten there yeah, to they're... to see the heritage. Oh sure, sure. Well, not the younger ones. They're they're talking about it now, but they are. Uh, you know, they're busy raising their kids, my grandkids. So, mm-hmm. well, when they get to that point, I'm sure they will. Yeah. And I, and and I just want to clarify, Chuck, because I may have misspoken. St. Patrick's Day is next Thursday on the seventeenth. But I think you said the parade is tomorrow on the twelfth, and the mass is tomorrow on the on the twelfth. And March, March, right, right, yeah. March twelfth, yeah. March twelfth, okay. yes, very good.
it'll be uh, it'll be uh, be interesting to be able to do that you know and, and to be able to bring forth um you know your own kind of uh, sense of your catholicism mm-hmm. you know celebrated in uh, uh through basically um your national heritage, it, right? It's pretty hard to separate those, uh, basically those two things. It's right? Almost impossible, you think? Yeah, don't, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're they're, they're wedded they're wedded uh, together, right? And there's been a tremendous influence of uh, of Irish here, right in the Milwaukee, is, in, or, yeah. Milwaukee urban area. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a great contribution of the, the uh, of basically the Irish uh, community, right? I know Father um, Jeff Haynes had um, mm-hmm. used to always cathedral? celebrate the uh, mm-hmm. cathedral, and he read this one. Uh, b- because now it, uh, the cathedral uh, mass used to always be, it was a celebration of, of St. Patrick's Day and the Irish heritage. Mm-hmm. And because now over the years, there have been so much participation by so many other, they decided to change the name to uh, a cathedral mass, you know, ah, uh, sure. which uh, <laughs> rather than the Irish mass. So he read this irate letter, you know, to him as a pastor, read it publicly in front of everybody at the dinner. He said, how dare you, you know, do this, you know, going on, you know, you have no sensitivity, you have no, on and on and on. And the bottom, it says, signed your mother, Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, that was and, cute. And, yeah. And it, the cathedral at one time was the major place for mass for the people that were living in that third ward area. Uh, prior to the fire, right. and then mm-hmm. it, then the migration took place uh, out to the Story Hill area, yeah. the Menominee Valley area, because exactly. a lot of the jobs were there. Yeah. Chuck, this has been a, a wonderful discussion. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We're going to take a final break. Okay. A reminder that all you need to know about what is happening here in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee can be found at the website, archmill.org, but you can also check things out on Facebook. We'll be right back to Living Our Faith here on Relevant Radio. My name is John Pentler, and I want to tell you the Uptown story. Seventy years ago in 1946, my grandpa, Irv Pentler, sold his Mercury convertible to buy three cars to start Uptown. His vision was to offer the nicest cars and treat people fairly. When you live by that vision and make sure that every person that works at Uptown focuses on treating our guests like family, you thrive over the long haul. When you need a new car, you owe it to yourself to give Uptown a try. Uptown Ford, one block south of Mayfair Mall. As a Catholic, why buy or lease your car anywhere else? Uptown Ford donates $200 to your church or school. The people at Uptown are attentive, fair, and easy to work with. Stop in and see the people at Uptown and you'll know. Uptown Ford on Highway 100 just south of North Avenue or Uptown Motors and Slinger. Go to RelevantRadio.com, keyword Uptown. Catholic owned and Catholic proud. I'm going out. We thank our guests today, Chuck McLaughlin, and as always, when we go forward into our day, into our weekend, we like to do it with prayer. Archbishop, if you would, please. And uh, together we say the prayer for the mission of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we, we praise, praise you and we bless you, for you are great indeed. Grant, we pray, as on that first Pentecost, that tongues of fire may descend upon us, and that the driving wind of your Holy Spirit may blow boldly into our hearts. Loving God, we ask you, make us effective and holy witnesses of the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Increase our faith through the sacramental life of the Church. Grant us courage to follow you as faithful disciples. Embolden us, O God, so that we may go forth to proclaim your gospel and renew the face of the earth. In this Archdiocese of Milwaukee, we humbly pray for strength and fortitude to follow your great commission, to go and make disciples of all people, living our faith through word and deed, through the intercession of St. John the Evangelist, patron of the Archdiocese, and Mary, Mother of the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Patrick, pray for us, and may God, Almighty Father, bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend, and let us all be transformed by the Spirit. This has been Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki and co-host Bob Bennis. Join us again next week for the latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. 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 Milwaukee.